just left uh, Iowa 80 truck stop the TA in uh, Walcott, Iowa and everything was you know moving smoothly but then uh, a police car zoomed by it probably uh, 150 miles an hour in the left lane and then, uh, the, then there was a sheriff's car so I knew something was something was uh, amiss and then the traffic stopped at this exit 295, uh, Iowa. And I see up ahead there's a red truck in the uh, in the median. And it's been raining all night, right? With all these tornadoes in the south, it was a very strong wind from the east and usually you know I see a lot of these accidents in the morning so I think these people they uh, they drive at night or maybe they get tired they fall asleep I don't know okay. I cannot tell you the oh he was coming from the opposite direction wow all right yeah, this happens, uh, you know, when you um, when it's been raining and uh, the ground is soggy, right? And what happens is that when you, when you pass someone, your uh, your ski attire goes on the shoulder, and then maybe you're driving too fast and it's slippery, and you. Uh, more to the left, you know, and then, and then it just pulls you in, it pulls you in uh, into the median. But it looks uh, like the, the truck was not destroyed, you know, uh, completely, so I think that the driver is okay. Right. I didn't catch the name of the company, so, but this just happened basically at, uh, no, maybe overnight, a few hours ago. At, uh, I-80 and I-74, as you can see.
was at the GA Travel Center in Morris, Illinois, USA. This truck stop is uh, very busy uh, in the late afternoons. But now it's only 11.27 Eastern or 10.27 local time. So. And I'm only stopping just for a quick snack. Americano from, from the Iowa 80 truck Just for a change, this load is great. You know, the truck drives very, very easy. Like my, uh, I can see that my fuel mileage is, is excellent because my uh, turbo PSI is extremely low, even despite the wind. You know, and braking, uh, the truck brakes much faster. No problems going up hills. You know. Take a break. All right, quick respite, and now it's uh, ranged against time because I managed to find an LTL load. Because I'm telling you guys and gals that the easiest way to increase the revenue of your trucking operation is to do is to fill up the trailer to its full capacity and that's when of course it pays to have a big trailer like a 53 instead of 48 foot trailer so the stuff I had this uh, dehumidifier was only 14 feet long Right, so I had 28 feet at the bottom and 11 on top and this is a good area to find a load going east like Quebec and stuff like that and I've been trying and trying and nothing and then I called one agent I said you know here's the situation I can uh, let's make some money you know why am I going half empty oh nothing now but we'll keep you in mind and then I just stopped now, I checked the load board and the same agent that I talked to yesterday, right, the, the one that says, oh, well, keep in mind, posts a load, a cat uh, farm tractor or a dozer or something, but just 20,000 pounds. And picks up in Michigan, in Grand Rapids. And I'm going by, right, on my way to the Canadian border. I call the guy say basically you know what the heck oh it's been so hectic here you know we've been so busy and I remember that someone asked me for an LTL but I couldn't remember who it was so basically next time I'm not gonna even waste my time you know just look at the load board like these agents they're too busy they cannot just deal with one truck you know it's much easier for them just to post uh, the load on the load board and see what 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 happens right but anyway I said how big is it? How much space you need? The guy says uh, 26 feet. 
I said, perfect. I got 28 at the bottom. And since that other piece was only uh, 5,300 pounds, and this, they say this uh, machine weighs 20,000. Yeah, I can do it. And 10 minutes later, the guy sent me the, the confirmation. And that, my friends, is putting 1800 bucks. I mean, adding $1,800 to my, my trip. So, I don't know what the fuel surcharge is, but basically, yeah, I'm getting fuel surcharge. Uh, I cannot tell you what that is. It's not on the low confirmation. And then I get 100% of that, and then 74% of the rest. And so I'm picking up in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. And I'm heading to Ottawa, the same Caterpillar dealer, dealer where I was just a week or a couple of weeks ago unloading, uh, unloading those dozers that I brought from uh, Baltimore, Maryland. So it's the same dealer. And then I'll be on my way to, uh, to New Brunswick with the, again with the 5300 pound uh, load. <laughs> But at least now I have something, at least now my lower deck is uh, is full, which is good. And we are passing a heavy equipment dealer on the right, and that's the color I was talking about to Angie in my comment. That's the color I like, you know, mustard yellow, and just, you know, paint the entire truck, the frame, the tanks, in this ugly color. Well, I'm pretty sure the truck will stand out. Alright, and this uh, cat dealer closes at 5. And I'm heading east, which means that I'm losing one hour. Because right now I'm on central time. But as soon as I enter Michigan, I switch to eastern time works against me so I gotta now uh, forget 93 kilometers an hour I gotta drive at least uh, 60 or 62 all right what are we doing now 96 
some movies they say everything will be revealed at the end. Well, why the heck would I want to wait till the end? Let's reveal everything now. So I just want to show you my load. Sorry for the noise. Yeah, this is a Michigan Cat. And so I picked this up, uh, this uh, dehumidifier. That's the one I picked up south of uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So cleverly I put a half a twist on each uh, strap because it was very windy. And they would start vibrating, you know, just... And uh, it doesn't look good. So this way they didn't even move. And I put two timbers, this is only 5,300 pounds. And then this baby here in the end, this is a Cat 420F uh, backhoe. And these are actually real dangerous. Why? Because they have this massive boom in the back. And there's lots of weight on this, on this machine in the end, you know. And the guy drove it on. And you gotta secure the... What the heck? You gotta secure the bucket. So I just use a strap with uh, some edge protectors and we put a 4x4 underneath. But it's actually pretty level. I'm gonna put it right on the floor, but it's just, you know, I'm not a fan of metal and aluminum. But check this out. If you guys remember that farm tractor they hold in uh, from Baltimore. Sorry, it's still raining here. You see how on CAT, because it's a construction machine, it has the special eyes for the chain. And that's that symbol, right? That's why it's supposed to tie it down, right? So why would I want to use an axle when I have a perfectly fine eye, you know, designed for it? That's what every machine should have. And here in the back, they have the same symbol over there, right? So I just uh, put it in that hole on one side, on the other side, right? Beautiful. And then here I just put a chain, but you know, there's nothing I can put in here, so. Oh, and one thing when you haul um, construction machinery, if there's any damage, you know, you gotta ask them, because here there was, uh, there was some chafing on the, on the uh, hose, and the guy came back and he said, oh, I forgot to tell you there was uh, damage, so we gotta, let me write it down on your bill of lading. But he says, the dealer where you're going already knows. Okay. And it's crazy weather. It's sunny, but it's still raining. It's totally screw up weather. Uh, all right. So we're supposed to be at the at the border today. Oops, sorry. There's water everywhere, right? I was supposed to be at the border, but you know, I found this LTL way past the opportunity. You know some good money, so I guess uh, I'll just go closer to Lansing, because this is Grand Rapids, but actually it's south of Grand Rapids. Uh, huge dealer, huge, the, the Caterpillar dealer, oh, check this out, there's a Kenworth T800, calling a Cobelco excavator. Oh, that's a light one, just on a step deck, to XL. Hey, that's children's games. Now, if you have an expensive uh, smartphone, like for example, I got a Samsung Galaxy Note 3, and it's very sleek and it's very smooth and it's easy to drop. And so, where do you keep it when you are, you know, in the in the in the transport truck? So what I did, I don't have a passenger seat anymore. I got rid of it because you know I needed more room for my straps, and uh, then I I got this. Uh, you know, just a small cotton from, you can get in any grocery store. And what I did is I used my old winter hat and with a couple of clips, kind of like what you use for, you know, files of papers, right? And it sits like this, and my phone is inside. You know, a very cheap, easy way to make sure that your phone stays uh, damage free in a harsh environment of professional trucking. So, thanks for watching. I hope this will help some people.